Good morning and welcome to this presentation for the subject selection for those students moving into 2022. I'm making this presentation uh, to all the staff at uh, Crosner College um, and I'm making it in the first day of our uh, fifth lockdown here in Melbourne. Obviously a lot of you would appreciate that lockdowns present a number of challenges for all, me all our members including our students when we're coming to do subject selection. So we are hoping that this lockdown will be short and that uh, we'll be able to carry on with our subject selection had, as we had originally planned. However, in this presentation, I will be discussing some uh, backup actions that, that we all just need to be mindful of if the lockdown is prolonged. So in this presentation, I'm gonna be covering a couple of items. Uh, the first item will be pathway discussions. Then we'll be moving on to some year changes with the Year 10 program. Uh, these are changes that everyone needs to be aware of. Then we'll, we'll be talking a little bit about the VCA programs, not, nothing in great detail. Um, some insights into the VEC courses, some insights into the VCAL programs. And then the important part of this presentation will be stepping staff through the subject selection process. Um, I've, I've got here subject selection processes because what happens at different year levels varies um, and you just need to be aware of that. And then we'll talk a little bit about future planning. So just with pathway discussions, okay, so the things that you want to consider, especially if you're a learner mentor, having a discussion with one of your students is just what is available as far as programs are concerned at the college. So there are a number of resources available to learner mentors and, and to the students through the careers office and the careers website. These include brochures, um, subject selection recommendation booklets, um, compass staff subject recommendations that you can see for each student um, put up by their subject teachers and obviously the student reports. Um, there are different types of senior pathways offered at the college that you need to be aware of, especially for those students in year 10 and year 11, and as they're moving through, or year 10, year 11, including year nines, as they move into the senior end of their studies. Um, they include, in general, either a VCE or a VCAL pathway. Um, within both of those pathways, there could be VET courses that are blended within their subject mix. Um, and then when we talk about a VCE pathway, there might be students who take on an accelerated learning program, which means effectively they're doing one subject a year ahead of where they should be. Um, if they are involved in a um, VET undertaking or and, and in particular a VCAL course, there are school-based apprenticeships options uh, available to students. So we just ask that you familiar familiarise yourself with that information. Then just some general advice in having conversations before, during and after the subject, sel subject selection process. Um, so what we want teachers to really be asking themselves with each individual student is what sort of learner is that student you know are they are they quite a academic focused learner um, in which which end you're going to be directing them towards a VCE pathway potentially with an ALP or are they an applied learner where you know a applied learning course at year 10 or a VCAL program or a VCE program blended with some VET might be more appropriate um, we also want our learner mentors to get an idea about, you know, what, what are the students thought as to what they want to do after school. This is really important. Now, in my communication with both students and parents, I've been talking about students to really think, of, think in terms of fields, like what field would they like to um, focus their efforts in, whether they've got competencies in science and they want to go down the science route, or if they have competencies in um, visual arts and they want to pursue that as, as a career beyond beyond their school. 
So we've, we're trying to get the students to think of fields just so that they can refine their selections. And this is something that we want our learner mentors to be start thinking about. Blended within this, we also want to be able to ascertain what is what level of competencies across you know, various subjects does the student have? So, and this is really important, and this really comes down to those staff subject selections or, or the subject recommendations made by subject teachers um, for students. And, and this information will generally be posted on Compass for each individual student. However, certain LMs might receive a specific email from either myself or Silvana uh, just just outlining, look, the, we, we really have concerns about this student selecting, you know, a subject like advanced mathematics at year 10. So so we might might then, you know, flag that student for the LM to say during your conversation, please just make sure that they're not selecting this subject. Look, it, and one, one point that we really want to make is it's okay for the learner mentor to say to a student, you know, we really don't think that subject is right for you. We want you to reconsider selecting a subject if it's not going to be in their best interest. Now, now, we'll, if, if the student is still wanting to pursue the subject, um, you know, in spite of the learner mentor's recommendation, there is a process for that student to follow. However, we do want to empower our learner mentors to be able to make a judgment call on what courses they believe are suitable for their students. Now, we don't want to get too pedant pedantic about that, but, but when you know you have a student who really is, um, is not capable of completing a subject or successfully completing a subject, then we want, we want the learner mentors to step up, have that conversation, explain to the student why they believe that that student is not selecting an appropriate subject for them and, and and we will back you so as as a leadership group and as a pathways team you will be supported in making that call um, we'll have our processes if the student wants to appeal it and so forth and 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 that that, that will run its um, natural course but but at this stage of subject selection we really want to make the point with our learner mentors that you know, you are empowered to, to have those conversations with the student and to stick to the recommendations that you believe are in that student's best interest. Okay, so one of the important changes, though, is the Year 10 program. It's going to occur around the Year 10 program. So over the last few years, we, we have been offering students moving from Year 9 to Year 10 a VCAL option, okay, normally they start off in foundation VCAL and they can start um, undertaking that VCAL option in year 10. However, in 2022, that, oh, that VCAL option will no longer be available. So every student in year 10 will do a year 10 program that looks very much alike, you know, so, so their programs will be, um, you know, we won't be talking about a VCAL program at year 10. We'll be just talking about a year 10 program. However, we do identify that the subjects that we currently offer at year 10 may not be the best subjects suited to what we would, what we would term those applied learner. Now, an applied learner is a learner that we believe is best, su best suited towards a vocational pathway. That's a learner who might be wanting to pursue an apprenticeship after school or might be wanting to go straight into the workforce. Now, there might be other reasons why we might term a, a learner as an applied learner with just how they work with their competencies um, and, and how, how they've performed. Um, some of that might come down to, you know, the, the student has had several modifications to their program and we don't think that it, it's fair to them or to other students that they go into a um, mainstream year 10 program with mainstream courses or mainstream subjects and, uh, and then they're completing those subjects with modifications, which really doesn't give them an insight as to 
their own level really might be beyond them so so they they lose confidence and 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 um and so we we're, we're trying to consider all of these options and get these students involved in subjects particular subjects that are that are that meet their level and still uh, address their curriculum requirements so Important note, with the Applied Learning Pathway, students are still completing the VIC curriculum. Okay, so that is not changed. But this is what their program may look like. So for a year, normal Year 10 program, students will be expected to do RE, English, Mathematics, and then they have a choice of Health and PE, Humanities, Science, and either an arts or a technology. They, these are things that are mandated to our Year 10 program. And then they have some uh, individual choices, mainly drawn from health and PE, humanities, science, arts and technology, throwing their performing arts and music. Um, so they have four, four individual choices that they can blend within their program. Now, this is what, our, you know, the bulk of our students, this is a type of, program that the bulk of our students would undertake however for our applied learners what we would be suggesting to them is that they would take on specific subjects relating to RE English mathematics and science so the RE subject that we want applied learners to be enrolling in is journey in faith the English subject that we're wanting our applied learners to be enrolling in is called English Communications 1 and 2, and the mathematics subject is called Applied Mathematics. For science, we there is going to be a new subject called Science Inquiry, and though those subjects can be, um, you know, a synopsis of those subjects can be found in the 2022 course guide for year 10 to 12. So one thing that I would be encouraging learner mentors to do if they do anything um, out of this presentation is to download the course guide for years 10 to 22. You can find it on the college website under the curriculum section. Um, download that, that um, document and get across what, what is involved in Journey in Faith, English Communication, Applied Mathematics, and science inquiry they it's really important that you get across what each of those subjects means in, because they're new subjects and they're particularly focused for what we would term as applied learning the other thing that you also need to consider is we, we could have a student who might be very competent might be, might identify as an applied learner but might be very competent with their english skills um, and, and they might opt to choose to do, you know, a year 10 English, semester one, semester two, they might even choose to do English language. If they have competencies in English, then we're open to um, allowing those students, that or that student to do that, that English. However, the same student may have, you know, several challenges in mathematics and, and is identified as applied learner, so therefore, we, we would suggest that, yes, okay, you, the student might be doing English language, but we want them then to be selecting applied mathematics. Okay. So who, who might want to take up an applied learning a program with an applied learning focus? Well, they have a clear goal that leads to an apprenticeship or a workplace after school, what we call a vocational pathway. They are strong kinesthetic learners, better suited to learning by doing and require something that taps into this to keep them engaged at school. Um, they might be better suited to a learning environment with greater scaffolding and more chances to practice the application of their knowledge. Okay. Um, learner mentors know their students. Subject teachers will provide recommendations and advice to students. So we would be hoping that most of our learner mentors, especially those learner learner mentors that have year nine, okay, would 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 be pretty confident in identifying who who their applied learners are going to be. However, we will provide advice 
through the additional needs team um, and that, that will come to you in the course of the subject selection process as to who we believe those students are and we'll be putting forward recommendations as to what we believe are the best um, subjects for those students to undertake. Okay, so VET courses. So students moving from year 9 to year 10 and then year 10 to year 11 and even 11 to 12, they have the option of un undertaking a VET courses. They're, they're a great way for students to get an insight into an industry or even a field, as I was saying before, that they want to focus on. So I know I was having a conversation just the other day with a student who was really identifying, look, I really want to pursue something in hospitality. You know, I'm looking that I'm going, going to undertake food studies, but then I want to complement my stu food studies um, with, with a vet course, okay? And, um, you know, we, we, we spoke to the student, I directed them to Julie, Julie then directed them to several courses that were open to them, both on-site, off-site courses that, that they could undertake. And you know, for all intents and purposes, what we're trying to get for that student is a program that is going to encourage them to pursue their desires. So, so you know, the VET, VET is very important that we have these options available to these students. So, like I said before, the courses are designed for Year 10 VCE and VCAL program. Every student who opts to do a VCAL certificate will have to undertake a VET, okay? And they're nationally accredited certificates. Um, there's information that you can find. Um, so please, you know, if you have questions around VET, Julie Pilioglu is a person to speak to, or you can just email the careers office and they'll be able to provide you with um, further information. VCAL programs, so with the introduction of the uh, new year 10 program not new but you know the omission of the year 10 foundation vcal vcal will be focused at year 11 and year 12 and will be largely focused on in intermediate and senior certificates okay year 10 will be year 10 students will be offered subjects that have an applied learning element to select okay we we half expect that a lot of our applied learners will for next year in year 10 will therefore select um, an applied learning focus going forward with VCAL. There are changes with VCAL that, that, you know, once it gets a little bit more refined and we know what the government is wanting to do in terms of VCAL and where it's going to sit within a VCE certificate, we'll make that information available to you. But your takeaway from today really is that VCAL for year 11 and year 12, that there's no changes for that in 2022. 2022 will have an immediate and senior VCAL certificate focus for year 11 and 12 students. We're just submitting the year 10 foundation VCAL course. So you, that, that, that's probably the big change that you need to be aware of. But obviously, you, some learner mentors, especially across Sacred Heart, will have year 10 students who are you know, interested in undertaking VCAL. They may not necessarily be in, currently enrolled in Foundation VCAL, but they may be wanting to pursue VCAL in Year 11 and then in Year 12. So uh, this option is open to them. So please get across your students, get to know what they want to undertake, and then, you know, hopefully you'll be able to direct them to the best uh, pathway for them. Okay, so coming to the biggie. Um, the subject selection process. So some important dates for you to know. So we were hoping on the 21st of July that we would have our year nine and year 10 students and their families attend the college. As, uh, as I said at the beginning of this um, presentation, we're, we're on the first day or I'm presenting on the first day of a five day lockdown. We don't think that it's going to be appropriate to have either students or families in on the Wednesday night, even if it, if this lockdown does go for um, just five days. So what, we've, what we were intending to do was have a subject expo where students and uh, their families would come in and they could discuss, um, you know, subject options with 
the the heads of learning and and accompanying teachers. However, this won't occur. There will be um, videos and and video presentations shared with the family just around the process. Um, but for for our families on that night, the pathways team will run a general general Q and A session online with our families so that they will be able to ask us questions, we'll be able to respond and direct them to the appropriate people where um, where we can't answer the questions. One thing that I, I will make clear here on, on the 21st of July, I will be stating that if they have subject specific questions, I will give them a, a reference or an index of, you know, who our heads, heads of learning are and you know, and their contact details as far as I'll give them their email addresses. And then if parents have uh, questions, then these questions will be forwarded via email to the heads of learning. Your heads of learning then may, uh, may, may then choose to uh, forward those questions to, you know, individual subject teachers because everyone has their own specialities. Um, and, and our expectation is that where you do receive a question, you do respond in turn. Um, we're not anticipating that we'll get flooded with a lot of questions. However, we, we, will, we do expect that we will get some from our families and we just hope that we will all work together as a community to help support the families and the students to understand what, what is on offer and what, what uh, different subjects actually entail. Uh, the next key date is probably or is the 30th of July. So this, this will involve any student who wants to undertake a VCAL in 22, a VET course in 2022, uh, an ALP course in 2022. Um, and I haven't got it on this slide, but there is an option for year 12 students if they want to study a single unit at university. They, these applications are, are all due on the 30th of July. Um, it will be communicated to students, but students will have to submit these um, applications to the careers office via that, that email address. Um, we haven't had too much difficulty with students following this process in previous years, so we're not anticipating a big issue with them doing so. But one thing to maybe um, stress with your students is if they're wanting to do, in particular, an ALP course, the 30th of July is the cutoff date. We won't be uh, considering applications after this date, you know, so, and, and part of that comes down to, we expect those students who are gonna take on an ALP or a VET course or a university course, including a VCAL course as well, we expect that if they're wanting to undertake those courses, that they're going to have to be proactive. They're gonna to have to meet deadlines and, and that's a hard deadline that, that we're setting. So just make sure that you're expressing that to students. Um, and then we're going to have subject selection conferences on the 10th and 11th of August. Now, at this stage, the subject selections are, are going to run on site and the students will, will come in and meet with, or each student will meet with their learner mentor to discuss the subjects that they want to undertake in 2022. So at this stage, it is still on site. Um, we are having provisions um, just in case that we are still in a lockdown and that we'll have to go in in a remote phase and, and do this via online. Um, if, if, if it comes to that, there will be further information that will be shared to you. Um, the subject selection conferences will involve current students. So current students in year eight, year nine, year 10, and year 11, okay? So every student who is currently in year eight, year nine, 10, or 11, will meet with their learner mentor for a 10 minute conference. And that will be on the 10th and 11th of August. Now the 10th of August, I think we have a session that, that will run after school. Okay, it's not long, I believe it's only four to six o'clock. Um, uh, the 11th of August is a whole day affair. So, so it's a normal school day, but it's a student-free day as far as students. There's no classes that day. Students will come in, meet with their learner mentors, and you'll be expected to um, conduct your conferences in that time. 
Um, I will provide further information about how to um, create those conference dates and, and, and to work with your students. At this stage, we still need to see what the settings are going to be as to whether our families are going to attend or not. Um, you know, so there's, there's a bit of discussion to be had at, at this stage. But, you know, what I would be requesting everyone to do is to plan for an on-site conference, um, or plan for on-site conferences, but just be prepared or be flexible to be able to go online if, if required. So roles and responsibilities. So subject teachers. So uh, uh, if as a subject teacher, you're, you're required to make subject recommendations for, for, you know, not every student, but students that, that you know shouldn't be undertaking subjects. You, we, we do expect that you um, make a recommendation that they don't undertake that subject. Um, so for example, if I'm, if I'm teaching a year nine mathematics class and I have, um, five students in my class who are really struggling just to meet, you know, the standard, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I highlight those five students in, in, in a recommendation that they don't undertake the advanced mathematics stream, um, Likewise, if I have a year 10 student who's doing, let's say, English, um, you know, quite strugg struggling to write an essay, then I'm going to make sure that with that student that I, I put into their profile, um, that I don't want them to be studying literature um, in, in 2022. And it's really important that subject teachers do make those recommendations because that in that helps um, the learner mentor make an informed um, judgment on, on what subjects they're going to advise the students to undertake or not. Um, it's really important for students moving from year 10 to 11 and for students who are deemed unsuitable for uh, a, a specific subject. So I'll just say that again, it is important for any student in particular year 10 to a year 11 because we want to get them in their um, appropriate VCE course if they're not undertaking a VCAL course we want to get them into the appropriate VCE course um, if they're not and, and for you to make the judgment or and to make the post that they're unsuitable for a specific subject. Learner mentors, like I said, you're going to have to conference with year 8, 9, 10 and 11 students. Um, this will be 10th and 11th of August. Um, our expectation is that, you know, yes, you'll have those conversations on either of those two dates, but we are hoping that you will start those conversations um, as soon as we launch the subject selection process on um, uh, the coming Wednesday. Um, and, and, and you start having those conversations with, with those cohorts. Um, the other person who's really vital to this role is John Dakin in, in, in his capacity as Senior Pathway Coordinator. So I did speak about if, you know, if you're a learner mentor and you're making a judgment that you don't think that it's in the student's best interest to undertake um, a subject, but the student is sort of fighting you um, and, and they're really wanting you to put it in, well, the person for you then to approach would be John Dakin and, or, or the Senior Pathways Coordinator. And he's really there to start that process of appeal and, and to help mediate between yourself and the student as to, you know, um, trying to get the best um, mix of subjects for them, you know, you know and matching between what, what, what they've presented as far as capabilities uh, have been before what their parents are, are thinking as far as their program and what we're thinking provided that we, we, we have some idea of what, what they've shown to us in, in previous um, subjects. So making a student recommendation. So, so this, this is an important one to do it. It's really easy. You just need to go to the student um, compass page, add a chronicle post, okay? From the drop down menu or drop down templates, what you want to do is you want to select the 2022 subject teacher recommendations. Then you write in your recommendations. As you can see here, I have one that I've posted for Mary Newen. 
okay, of a, of a minute for Mary Nguyen, but I've said for Mary Nguyen that we're recommending that she undertakes English language and literature. Obviously, Mary is a very competent English um, student, um, but we're not recommending her for advanced mathematics because she hasn't shown um, enough in uh, semester one or even previous years as far as her mathematics is concerned. And, and, and what we then we would expect is for every, um, every teacher or every learner mentor, when they come to have those um, subject selection conferences, they're checking Mary's um, profile, they're seeing what the recommendations are, and then adjusting their conversation um, on the advice that the subject teachers have provided. So there will be several forms that are also provided to students. So um, for, for year eight students or year nine, 2022, they'll have a, just a subject selection form. Year 10s in 22, so these will be current year nines, um, they'll have a year 10 subject selection form, request a study uh, VCE, that's what we would term as an ALP form and a vet help application form. Year 11 will have all of those forms, um, but they will also have a VCAL form. And if they're wanting to, a, a year 12 in 22, they'll have those form, same forms. However, they'll have their request to study a university unit in year 12 form. Um, one thing to note, every form besides the subject selection form, that's to be completed electronically and emailed to the careers office on the 30th of July. All the other subject selection forms though, so the year nine subject selection form, year 10, 11, 12 subject selection form, that will be needed to be um, brought to the subject selection conference. Okay, so subject selection forms are to be completed and presented either in print version or electronically during the subject selection conference with the learner mentor. What we would be asking learner mentors to say to their students is we want the students to complete their forms electronically and to keep an electronic file of that form. But then when it comes to the actual conference, if we're on site, we want them to bring a printed version. The reason why we want them to complete an electronic form is if we are in lockdown or we need to um, conduct the conferences um, remotely online, um, we want to have an electronic version that we can reference. Um, if, if we are on site and they're able to be there in, in, a, in a physical um, way and, and be able to present a physical copy, we want, we want them to be able to attain those copies physically. So very simple, students complete electronically but, and, and maintain it electronically. If we're on site, then they print it out and they bring that physical copy to the subject um, selection conference. Um, all other forms are electronically submitted to the careers office. So just some commonly asked questions. Uh, and and, and they, these are questions that have all come our way across um, many years, okay? So can a student select two ALP subjects as part of their year 10 program? The answer is no. So for any student, some students may apply for two subjects or two ALP subjects. However, we'll only allow them to undertake one, okay? Um, some students might do, you know, a language out of school, which might be unit one and two at year 10. However, that's external to the college and it's not part of our program. The idea on that is our expectation is that our students do a full program across year 10, year 11, year 12. Um, students, we're really trying to discourage the students having any idea that, you know, if they take on two ALP subjects in year 10, then when they get to year year 12, they can drop a couple of subjects and, and have a really reduced load. We're, we're really pressing the point that we want our students to be completing a full load throughout their time with us. So the answer is they, they, they can apply for two, but they're only going to be given one, okay? Um, can a student select an ALP subject and a VET on-site course 
as part of their year 10 program. This they are able to do. So the VET course you know, is really focused towards those students who want to focus on a specific industry or field and, and we're going to support them in those, in those endeavours. However, and, and if the student is capable of completing an ALP, then that's a bonus and, and, and we keep on supporting them. But they can select an ALP and a VET and we can allow both. Can a current year 11 select a partial program, i.e. one subject select less if they are completing a VC unit three and four. So so this question comes out of probably the first question that I was answering. The answer to this is no. So some of our year 11s will have the idea that because they're completing a three and four um, sequence in year 11, when they get to year 12, they can drop down a subject. We, we don't allow that. So um, what what, what we would say to the students is they need to select a full course or a full load of um, subjects for their year 12. There might be circumstances where we do permit it, but those circumstances are only where students have multiple um, three and four sequences completed. Um, and the, these are normally external to the college. And some and even in those cases, we, we really have a look at their results and and gauge you know whether their results are of a high standard so really that they, they want to get 40 40 or more for for both of those undertakings for us to consider reducing their load okay so for our learner mentors the conferences okay so year 8 year 9 10 11 students will have to attend a subject selection conference with their year year um with their learner mentors 10th and 11th of August are the date. 10th of August, I think we're running from about 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. 11th of August, the, the time will run from about 9 to 4 o'clock. Um, parents and the carers at this stage are expected to be involved. However, this may change, and this, and this will change depending on, on, on the settings. Um, and at this stage, conferences will be conducted on site. If there is a change to that, I will put out further information for for us um, or for everyone to to get across just how how we're expecting those learner mental conversations to occur. Um, so there will I will be um, pub, pub, publishing a, a series of documents for subject teachers and learner mentors. This is the front covers from last year's guide for subject teachers and learner, learner mentors as far as subject selection is concerned. I really encourage you to read this document. So if you're at, you know, and, and I've got two documents here because I've got a document that will be set for Christ the King and St. John's and likewise I'll, I'll have a document for Sacred Heart. I really can't stress enough that um, you need to read these documents. They, they, they can be quite lengthy in detail, but if but generally if you use the index page and you have a question, refer to the index page, go to the section, you'll normally find that your, your question is going to be answered in, in that appropriate section. What we found last year was there was a number of questions coming to myself, Julie, John, um, just around the process. Um, and, and the information was in these documents. So, you know, I'm saying again, I can't stress strongly enough for learner mentors in particular to read this information. So the general process is this. Student attends Senior Pathway Subject Expo. You know, that, that's that been altered, but, but you know, they'll, they'll need to get the information on, you know, what the subject selection process is, a Q&A with their families, Subject teachers make your recommendations. The students will select their program and will, you know, you know all of the forms have to have the appropriate signatures. Um, students will commit, submit their completed forms to the appropriate people by the set deadlines. Okay, learner mentor conferences, uh, 10th and 11th of August. Okay, student selections with both the student and their parents. Um, any disputes that a learner mentor is having, you go through the senior pathways coordinator. Um, learner mentors, you'll be expected to enter your enter each student's preferences in via web preferences. 
I'll ask Georgie to give us a, a briefing just on the morning of the 11th, um, just so everyone can get across web preferences. A lot, I know a number of you have used it before. It, it's quite easy to use, um, but there will be information forthcoming about how, how best to use web preferences. And the important part about that is that you email a receipt of, of the selections to the student. It's really important that the student has a receipt of those selections and it's good for us to know that, they, that they've seen what the selections are on web preferences. Sometimes students or um, subjects are entered incorrectly and if students can see that receipt, they will normally pick up on those changes and we can fix any, any changes that need to be fixed. We, we can do so from the back end quite easily. And then the learner mentor, when, when we talk about archiving their, their selections, if it's a printed form, all you need to do is keep a hold of those printed forms. Julie or someone from the careers office will then come around, collect them, and, and we'll archive them from there. So, um, so that's the process going forward. Web preferences, this is what web preferences looks like, okay? So uh, Georgina will provide further information on this, but generally what, what, what you'll need to do is you'll need to, um, you know, use a login detail for each individual student, get in there, enter their subjects as per their subject selection form, and, and then um, you submit it to web preferences. And that's all. I hope you're enjoying your day and uh, I wish you the best. If you have any questions regarding subject selection, uh, the Pathways team are the other people to contact. So that, that, would, that would include Suzanne, myself, Julie, John and Ray Mitzi if, if you have questions about VCAL. All right. Thank you.